All right, so we have my RG50 here and has a Dutch motor in it. It had a nasty boo-boo. After 17 years of running perfect, the engine decided to drop a valve and literally cracked the engine in there. So the sleeve in there, the liner in there cracked. So I can't even put a, I can't even sleeve it because it cracked at the top. If it wouldn't have cracked all the way up there, I could have got away with it. This is the, um, the F3M. Uh, 1011 F model uh, engine and um, it was supposed to be rated for 50 horsepower but now it is just a giant scrap heap it is pretty much not rebuildable at this point so um, cranks good All the, a lot of other little parts are still good on it but I can't reuse this engine so I've been searching for a new engine for it and I decided to go with a the newer model was the 2011 and what I did find out was um, if it's a, so if it's say F3 and then you got an M or an L, well the M would be remote cooled, the L is, it has the cooler built onto the engine, which I'll show you here in a second. And I decided to go with the newer model, so I've been searching, um, I was going to go get a B, um, or an F3 uh, L 2011, and I found one low hours. I was like, all right, cool. I'll put it on there and use that one. But then I found a BF 3L 2011, which is the turbo model. So I always felt like this machine was just a little bit low on horsepower. Um, I didn't want to go huge on the horsepower. Um, the four cylinder on the super 50, they put a four cylinder in there. So they stretched the frame a little bit just to fit it in there. I didn't want to do that. So I decided to go with, uh, same three-cylinder engine, just it's got a turbo built on it. It's going to be a very tight fit. Fuel tank's right there, and the turbo literally drops down, um, like, right in this area. And, I mean, it's going to be a close, close fit. So, we're going to go ahead and put this one out today, test fit the other one, and see what we've got, see what I've got to modify. Because, worst case scenario, if I have to raise this up an inch, I'll make a bushing, raise it up. Um, all this is all hydraulic, so nothing really connects to anything except that by hoses and wires. So if I have to raise it up a little bit, which means I might have to raise up the reservoir right here. I might have to raise up the hoods a little bit. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. If you look how the Carlton stump grinder is done, it doesn't even have hoods. It's actually all the engines out in the open, easy to access on everything. Rayco stuck this in a frame and made it very tight and uh, kind of a pain in the butt to get some of the stuff. When I pulled the oil pan off my engine, it looked like it rolled out of the factory um, engine you know, shop that day. It's that clean inside. So everyone was like, oh, you must have blown your timing belt. Well, timing belt's right there. It's still good. Uh, I pretty much put my hand on it and rotate around. All the teeth are there. So they're like, oh, you must have jumped time. I am going to check the timing on it once I get it out. I got to order the actual timing tool. Um, so I can pull this right here out, stick it in there, make sure it's at timed uh, correctly, or if it actually did manage to jump a tooth. We'll see. Right about when it did it, it did a bounce, and then it pretty much made that noise like it's doing a hardcore miss. And then right after that, you know, blew oil everywhere. So, yeah. So let me show you what we got for the replacement. It is going to be awesome. And there it is. This is the BF3L 2011. So it's the newer model. Um, the L, because it's got the cooler I was telling you about, is already built onto the engine. Another thing is the fan's already right here. So I will have to add a fan to my cooler for the hydraulics or change the cooler completely to something that like Carlton uses. Um, they'll work just fine. The alternator is also built inside or behind here. Um, so there's a few things a little bit different on it. So, and there is the little turbo on this little bad boy right there. And that's what I was telling you. It's going to be a very tight fit by the time you get into where the frame is. This came out of a concrete cutter. So I'm going to change the motor mounts. A few little things. But this is what the turbo engine right here looks like. Now the 2011 will fit where the 1011F was. Um, if it's just a 1011 engine, that will not work. That's a completely different engine. So the 1011F and the 2011, um, the blocks are, are pretty much sitting in the same exact footprint. The bell housing, all that stuff mounts up the same. 
Um, internals were different on the 2011, so they were able to get a little bit more horsepower out of these guys right here. Um, they rated these um, right at 50 horsepower without the turbo, the 2011. Um, on the 1011F, I was told that Dutch um, pretty much upped the fuel pump, um, possibly maybe injectors, to get a little bit more horsepower, and they were right around 48 horsepower in the RG50. So now we're going to be a true 66 horsepower um, because of the turbo. I don't have to run this at full throttle, full RPMs, and try to push you know the 66 horsepower, but you know, if it is a little bit more horsepower, it in theory should work a little bit easier, recover a little bit easier. Um, you know, I just won't run it at full throttle kind of thing. So the turbo should allow it to recover on a hard stump, uh, you know, a lot easier when it gets a bog spot. So um, kind of excited to try to get this thing stuck in there, um, or I should say shoehorned in there because uh, like I said, this the turbo right here, starter goes behind that shield right there. And I mean, when I did it by my fingers, it's two where my fingers goes between a little bit more than two of my fingers between the uh, starter and the frame of the machine or the fuel tank. And the fuel tank is built into the frame of the RG50. So it is going to be a tight fit. Um, just worst case scenario, I have to cut the fuel tank, put a little indention in there, reweld everything back up, repaint everything, um, or raise this up by an inch all the way around and um, just raise the hoods. So let's get in there and uh, we'll start on that here in a little bit. I just want to share with you guys the project that I'm doing right now. Um, kind of makes sense though, because everything else I always modify. So sticking a uh, you know, turbo um, engine in my RG50. Uh, and if I remember, or I know, actually I should say, if this is correct, this will be the first turbo RG50. They did make an, a turbo on the Super 80 or the RG80 that had a turbo engine in it, but the RG50 um, and the Super 50 were just NA engines. So this will be probably the very first turbo RG50. So we will see how it goes. All right, this is the intro video on it. So stay tuned for all the other videos as uh, we get the other um, engine out and then get this one test fit in there. I'll do some updates over the next uh, couple of days because this is gonna be a quick change um, I got some stumps I have to do after we had a hurricane. I have some customers waiting, so this has got to be done quickly. So stay tuned for updated videos coming up.